Hello and welcome to Swindon Model Works. Today we'll be adding wagon loads to a four plank wagon, bogey bolster wagon and a departmental clam wagon using products you'll find at a local hobby store, out and about in the garden and even recycling old track you might have lying around. At this stage these loads are removable as I haven't fully decided to make them permanent in each wagon. The first two guides I can only show you the finished result and explain how I did these as they were completed before I decided to film it. Our first wagon we shall look at is the British Rail Bogey Bolster Wagon from Backman. And here it is. It's a flat wagon with stanchions and uprights to hold um, iron girders, lumber, logs and stuff like that. By Backman from China. Now the product we're going to be using today is the Hobbycraft wooden craft wigs and what I first did to the wagon first uh, was adjust the stanchions because straight from Backman it had the stanchions in the center here which would have been set up to carry iron girders and looking at reference reference material uh, when it carried logs, lumber or iron tubing they had these stanchions on the outside so it was a simple pull out and glue in these there they are obviously were glued in by Backman some of them were quite easy to pull out others broke off but if you add a little bit more glue into that particular one there then it will be the exact same height as the rest of them, as you can see there. What I first did after prepping the wagon, I then added on, I tried to calculate how many I would need for the bottom layer by just adding them one by one onto the bottom until it basically filled the bottom. And I calculated for my wagon it was five um, but when testing it out I noticed they were too long as you can see if I can try and get it on camera uh, it's too long so I ideally want two on here two sets of logs uh, so I'd and without a long overhang so I would have to chop off a good portion of the log but they didn't go to waste, they are in a four plank wagon just over here which could be recycled into other loads into the future so I measured 1.5 centimeters and cut that off the, 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 the uh, twigs I used for the bottom layer and then glued them together but when I glued them together I used rocket card glue but I do suggest using PVA glue instead because I think the rocket car glue was just a bit too too runny so when I glued the logs together I pushed them together quite tightly and if there's any spots where they were touching that's why I added the glue so it would be there there and there there and there and there and that is the base layer finished now once the base layer had dried, or you can do it while it's wet as well, um, but that would be a bit difficult to handle because they do um, bend and they would obviously uh, come apart. But what I did then was add four more on the top just to give it looking a bit more full. And I realized that for uh, the two layers would be ideal for the look I was going for on the wagon. Now with the second layer I glued it in a different way so instead of gluing it there there like I did on the base layer and then gluing the two layers together I just glued them straight on top of the first layer just to add a little bit more strength. So that's some excess twigs out of the way I will now show you the finished product. So this is one of them as you can see, um, when I glued them together, I did move them a little bit just to make them uh, look uneven um, and not uniform. 
because you wouldn't find any trees exactly the same size uh, if they were cut, cut down straight from a forest. Um, and you can see a little bit of glue here and there uh, where, where it's gone all glossy, but that could be sorted with weathering. Um, and here is the second one. So if you can see on the camera now, I've got a nice gap there. Um, and there's no, not really any overhang unless I move it there. That would be a bit more realistic actually. Um, nice gap there and there's only a little bit of overhang either side. To finish this I, I, off, I purchased the Scale Model Scenery Fine Steel Chain. Um, what I intend to do is, uh, if you're going to make your wagon permanent, uh, wagon load permanent, sorry, it would uh, go around the wagon, glue there, and glue there, and the chain will go around the load. But because mine are going to be temporary, I'm going to add the chain onto the wagon there, but only glue it under there. Um, and I'd have two chains on, one there, one there, one there, and one there. The second wagon load we'll be looking at today is for the Clam departmental wagon from Hornby, which is the super detailed one as you can see, with the excessive detail on the bottom and the NEM pockets. Now this project started when I was at a local hobby store. I had an idea. I saw some rather large lollipop sticks and I had uh, some excess track from old train sets when I was younger and they were all broken, tatty and I had loads of sleepers in just a random wagon just for storage. So what I decided to do was cut the lollipop sticks to size and I used a permadis one but I would suggest black paint paint them black so when you look from at the load from above it won't show through um, and then add double sided sticky tape just under there so this is how the load will sit. You've got double sided sticky tape just under there. And I laid all these sleepers along. But what I needed to do first to prep the sleepers. So here's a prepped sleeper. Uh, it had the excess track bits there and there they needed cutting off before I laid them down. And that was the base layer basically done. And then I just repeated the couple steps that I used. Uh, I got another lollipop stick, uh, put that on top of the existing sleepers I had here and then um, obviously painted it black first and then put some more double sided sticky tape. You can just about see uh, on my eye range um, the double sided sticky tape there um, but with a, with, with, as this is a wagon load you probably won't know, even notice it. And because I had a little bit more, too many sleepers, I popped them on the top, just like so. And that's just a useful way to recycle old track. You can add it to any wagon load you want. You don't have to be a departmental wagon load. It could be any wagon, just for storage or just, a, just for show. But as I said, to prep the sleepers, this is how, obviously, Hornby track comes. I had to cut each and every bit of those off just to just so they could line up properly. What I could do next time or in the future is paint the sleepers. So in real life there's not no black sleepers at all. Um, and I could even paint the little chairs if I want to as well just to add that little bit more more realism. Or I could add a little bit of ballast or a little bit of greenery on here like it's been sat for a while. Um, but that's all, all in the future or all for my next project um, but as you can see the load is removable so I could in theory make a variety of loads for this little wagon and then just pick and choose which ones I want to model or which ones I want to run at the time and it will suit the wagon perfectly uh, as you can see it does the job it looks great and it's recycling old track so it's cheap
The third and final wagon we'll be looking at is the four plank Great Western Railway wagon from Dapo. When I purchased this wagon it came with its own plastic load but I won't be using that. As you can see I'm placing the matchsticks in the wagon one by one to double check on how many matchsticks I need to create one layer. I decided to glue each matchstick one by one as to make sure my load was removable from the wagon. If you want a more realistic wagon load, make sure to vary how you glue the matchsticks together and make sure they're not uniform. A lot of the steps in this guide are repetitive, so I've sped them up and added some music. Once layer 1 is complete, make sure to test fit into your wagon so then you can decide on how many layers you need to do. For this wagon, I worked out 13 matchsticks across were equal one layer and I decided on four layers, but you can use more layers if you want a bigger load.
once layer 2 is complete, you can now glue it to layer 1. I decided to stagger each layer by 1cm so that all 4 layers will fill the wagon. If you have more layers, you can decide on how much you stagger each layer by. now is repeat until you have all the layers you need. The inspiration behind this video comes from messing about with models when I watched his video on when he was adding wagon loads to his open top wagons.
While looking at Google for reference material, I decided I was only going to do four layers in this wagon. And here is the project finished. So there we have it. Small wagon loads with a big impact. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Let us know if it's inspired you to try it yourself or even adapt it. For your own wagon loads. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe down below.